All right, praise the Lord. This is Steve Sterling once again. Welcome, everybody, and uh, just sharing this good news and uh, putting together uh, a composition of things so that you can have a break and uh, get a release and have some rest and enter into God's best, pass the test, be filled with zest until you get the crest. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, let me start it off. You know, Psalm 146.3. This is Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center here in the heartbeat of heaven, Dallas, Texas. And um, here it is, Psalm 146.3. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. Okay, so a lot of us are trusting in the government and leaders in authority to take control of things, but hmm, how does it measure up to the scripture, Psalm 3320? Our soul waits for the Lord or on the Lord. He is our help and our shield. So he wants to be our help and he wants to be our protection, and so we need to let him be so and do so just as he uh, wishes. You know, who can fight against God's will and prevail anyway? Psalm 37, 39, the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. Salvation of the righteous is from the Lord, and salvation includes everything. You know, it includes victory. It includes deliverance. It includes healing. It includes the blessing. You know, it, it includes all phases of salvation. And um, there's many aspects of it. And so... God wants you to have all of it. So the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He has it all, and he wants to give you everything that you're looking for, everything you need, everything you wish, want, need, and desire, so that you can retire, refire, and get reestablished and reaffirmed. Hallelujah. Get a firm grip on things. Uh, Psalm 62, 5, rest in God alone. Rest in God alone, O my soul, for my hope comes from him. There it is. So we need to have a continuous, a constant expectation coming from God. And the only way that our soul, which is our, you know, the main hub of the soul, or the main uh, carrier component uh, of the soul is the mind. Uh, our mind consists of our, I mean, our soul consists of our mind, our will, emotions, intellect, imagination. And so rest in God alone. Rest in God alone. Do you get that rest in God alone? God alone can bring the satisfying peace, um, and give a poise and posture and positioning to get us in the right frame of mind, put us in the right reference point, give us the right outlook on life, give us the uh, assurity of the best possible scenarios to govern our lives. So why ferret out and just um, get fleshed out and, um, and just get spread out with all these other things when you can rest in God alone? Psalm 62, 5, oh, my soul, for my hope comes from him. We need a constant, continuous expectation built in us that we are going to receive from God. Hallelujah. And how do you do that? Well, you wait on the Lord. You know, wait on the Lord. Psalm 130, verse 5, I wait for the Lord, or I wait on the Lord. My soul does wait. See, um, our spirit, born again nature, uh, doesn't need to wait. It's already perfect. It's already complete. It's already entire. It's already thoroughly furnished. Uh, and when God gives us that born again nature, he, he breathes within us, you know, uh, all that heaven has and, uh, all that God is composed of and, and all that God, um, um, exudes and all that God, uh, all has got all the God fabric, all the God structure, all of the God composition is in there. But, Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. You've just got to locate, find, and you've got to identify and then begin to uh, ally with those uh, points in the spirit, born again, man, which is complete, and then flow from there in the soul. I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait. And in his word, I put my hope. So we need to have constant expectation and constant flow from God's word. Amen. And that's where it's got to come from, the word of the living God. Hallelujah. Because he's there to help us, you know. And just get this notion out of your mind that you're going to get help from someplace else. I mean, God may use other 
uh, men and women and, and other situations of life as components to bring us uh, what we're looking for. But to trust in them is, is vain. You know, uh, Psalm 108, 12, give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Vain or futile or uh, unfruitful is the help of man. Uh, Psalm 124, 1 to 3, if it had not been the Lord who was on my side, uh, what, what, what would I have done? Thank you, Jesus. And so there's just a lot of scriptures that point us into the right direction, breaking all the insurrection. You know, God's got a lot of help standing by to assist us. You know, Psalm 91, verse 11 and 12, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all of thy ways, all of thy ways, all of thy material components, all of thy needs all of the structured things that are challenging you right now, anything that's adversarial, any of the things that um, seem to be out of sorts and out of alignment, where he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all of of thy ways. Hallelujah. In fact, in uh, 1 Samuel 2.9, it says, He guards the steps of his faithful ones, but the wicked perishes in darkness. For by his own strength shall no man prevail. See, by his own strength, no uh, no man shall prevail. This is a spiritual fight. This is a uh, a fight that's greater than just human uh, reference point. We're talking about angels and uh, guardians and uh, uh, powers, rulers, principalities, thrones, dominions, all of these other entities that are beyond the natural world that are that are in this tussle, so to speak. And there, there's a great uh, warfare over us uh, tapping into the born againness of ourselves and get everything that God has. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is what within you. Hallelujah. You know, I like it says in Psalm 121, 3, it says, He will not allow your foot to slip. He will not allow your foot to slip. Your protector will not slumber. He's not sleeping. He's not going to allow you to slip. He's not going to allow you to, um, you know, be um, to be uh, knocked out, knocked down, and uh, and fall away from what he has for him. You know, if we're really earnest with him. Proverbs two eight. He's here to guard the path of justice and protect the way of his saints. So he knows our ways, and he's there to protect us. He's our guardian, and um, he's right there uh, working the paths of justice for us. Uh, and trying to uh, navigate our uh, our uh, allotted portion in life, it will allow him. And I know there's a lot of traps and there's a lot of uh, snares and a lot of um, gins and, 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 and a lot of uh, uh, situations that the enemy has set up at Proverbs 3.26 says, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from the snares and will keep your foot from the snares and god's our keeper we've got to know that these are these are things that have to be underwritten these are things that you've got to know you've got to have uh, confidence in you got to you know these scriptures and allow these scriptures to effervesce and allow these scriptures to to bring you a fluidness and readiness and uh, steadiness and let these scriptures just uh, pinpoint uh, with pinpoint accuracy uh, give you traction as God is working on bringing you all that he has in his divine action. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isaiah 27, 3, I, the Lord, am the keeper. I water uh, my garden continually. I guard it day and night so that no one can disturb it. God's not going to let your life be disturbed, disrupted, and um, you're not going to let it be disadvantaged in any way because, um, you know, because uh, Psalm 91, 11, for he will command his angels concerning you. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways, to guard you in all of your ways. He commands his angels to do so. There you go. And again, Psalm 91, 11, and 12, that's it. I mean, so awesome, isn't it? Amen. 
you know, Psalm 91, 12 says they will lift up their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. So it just goes on and on, the goodness, the greatness, the wonderfulness of God. So now that we've got some of those things established and we can understand, you know, that we've got God with us and that we're trusting in him completely and we know that God has a vast array of um, helpers, a vast array of uh, spiritual support uh, working with us and behind the scenes. Um, you know, we're believing God's going to do something brand new. Isaiah forty three nineteen. Behold, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness. Look at that. I will make a way in the wilderness, streams in the desert. So where God, where is God going to move a new thing to? He's going to move the new thing into the thing that has bewildered you, befuddled you, and muddled you, that has kept you uh, fruitless and powerless and helpless and hapless. He's moving in a new way in our wilderness, and, and, and he's bringing streams in the desert, the unfruitful areas of our life. That is what God is up to right now at this moment in time. Hallelujah. You know, and that's not the only scripture that talks like that. In Isaiah 41, 18, I will open the rivers on the barren, look at that, barren heights, and fountains in the middle of the valley, right in the middle of the valleys. Look at that. Talk about walking through valleys. Well, he's right in the middle of the valley. Fountains in the middle of the valley. What? That's unheard of. That's unparalleled. That's just unlike anything we've ever seen before, opening rivers in barren heights that is totally miraculous. I will turn the desert into a pool of water and dry land into flowing springs. Dry land into flowing streams. How? Desert in, into pools of water. How in the world? How is he going to do that? Well, my, 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 God is quite capable. God is quite able. God, again, we, we read it before, God's our protector. He's our refuge. He's going to keep us steady and sturdy. He's going to keep us right on it. He's going to keep us right in the mix, uh, breaking all the devil's tricks, and because he's moving systematically, uh, spiritually, and supernaturally. Systematically, spiritually, and supernaturally. Systematically, spiritually, and supernaturally. You know, Isaiah 25, 4, I love the major prophets. For you have been a refuge for the poor. Look at that right away. A refuge, a refuge for the poor. So those of you that think you're going to get taken out by the coronavirus or any other virus or, or any other economic condition or the conditions of life, where you have been a refuge for the poor, a stronghold for the needy in distress. Look, in distress, a stronghold in distress, a stronghold in distress. Yes, yes, his very best, a stronghold in distress. And goes on to say, a refuge from the storm, a shade from the heat. I mean, you know, the enemy's bringing the heat, but guess what? He's our shade. He's our refuge from the storm. How did, and it even goes on to say, from the breath of the ruthless, from the breath of the ruthless, uh, that's like a rain against a wall, just pelting, smiting, and just uh, fighting against us tyrannically and, and satanically. And in all these uh, different impositions and prepositions and propositions, it doesn't make any difference. Hallelujah. God tells us to mount up, to get up, to move up, to stand up, and to go up. And doesn't tell us to backtrack, doesn't tell us to retreat. Matter of fact, Isaiah 12, 2 says, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the God, the Lord God is my strength. He's my song. He is has become my salvation. He's my strength. Song has become my salvation. Look at that strength. Song will become salvation. We should be, we should be so infiltrated and infused with divine strength. The strength uh, that the Lord has that that holds all the mountains in place. The strength that uh, God has that holds all the seas uh, back by drawing boundaries. The strength that God has by holding all the stars in space uh, and keep them all in formation and, and in God proximity and God geometry and the God metrics of things. Hallelujah, for God is my strength and my song. He's become also my salvation. So we should be singing new songs. We should be rejoicing in his salvation. Thank you, Lord. There's a lot of other scriptures. Well, let me just read one more in that genre. In Isaiah 4, 6, a shelter uh, to give shade from the heat by day and a refuge in a hiding place from the storm and the rain. 
the storm, the rain, and the heat. Storm, the rain, and the heat. Storm, the rain, and the heat. Three things that are coming with an offensive uh, mindset against us. But no weapon formed against us can prosper. No weapon, no matter what is formed, it will not prosper. So what is all this saying to us? Well, you know, it's all it's all good news. Let me just tell you that right now. It's all good news, God news, great news, wonderful news. And it's it's news that we need to hold dear and near to ourselves and just let God administrate, orchestrate, intelligate, impartate, and uh, emancipate. Hallelujah. I think we've been on for about 15 minutes. So I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible. hope I can do it. I don't know. I'm going to try to keep it to 30 minutes. But we'll see how it goes. Um, hallelujah. Well, let's just reel off a few scriptures. Because you've got to have a vision. You've got to know where God's taken you. Your imagination has to, has to come into play here. Your, your thought life, uh, all of your dispositions, your attitudes, and all of the platitudes of your life, of, of your you know, level of living. You've got to get into a, a formation in your um, conclusive or concluding mind, and and your um, forming mind, and your and your creative mind, and your you know, and your um, confidence in your mind. And I'm going to give you these scriptures to shore you up here. Ezekiel thirty four fourteen. I will feed them in good pastures. Look, I will feed them in good pastures, and the lofty mountains of Israel will be. Uh, will be their grazing, grazing land. So God, he's elevating, I mean, celebrating and elevating us to the highest possible level, feeding us with good pastures, lifting us to the high lofty places of Israel and in and, and, and the well-grazing lands. Hallelujah. And his, his idea is to refresh us. Refresh us with what? Refresh us with abundance. You know, God is not second class. He's not second tier. He's not, he's not less than perfect. He is absolutely um miraculous and, and, and he is absolutely just magnificent beyond degree you know jeremiah thirty one fourteen. i will refresh the priest with abundance and my people will be filled with my bounty declares the lord i will refresh the priest with abundance and my people will be filled with my bounty god said with my bounty they will be filled look at that they will be filled and the priest will be refreshed Hallelujah. And God's got a garden and he's growing it. There's no doubt about it. Jeremiah 31, 12. And they will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will be radiant in the, look at that, bounty in the Lord, bounty of the Lord. Well, wouldn't you be radiant if the bounty of the Lord is being displayed in front of you? Of course you would. You would be um, outside your, outside the box just so animated. Well, that's what's happening here. The grain and the new wine, the fresh oil, and the young of the flocks and herds, it says, "Radiant right the bounty of the Lord." It explains what bounty is: the grain, the new wine, the fresh oil, the young of the flocks and the herds. Is talking about seed time and harvest here. Seed time and harvest. Their life will be like a well-watered garden. Never again will they languish. Never again will they languish. Hallelujah! And, and, and expect only the best. I mean. Psalm 107, 9, for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with what? Good things. Good things. And, you know, uh, if we're not in a place where God can reach us, then he beseeches us to repent, just give our life back to him, to just humble ourselves and, and ask forgiveness and let him reset the dials, let him uh, throw those new switches. Amen. And let him turn those new knobs. I mean, get us right where we're supposed to be. You know, Second Corinthians five seventeen. Repent then and turn to God, so that your sins may be blotted out. That the time of refreshing may come from the Lord. That the time of refreshing may come from the Lord. Repent then and turn to God, so that your sins may be blotted out. I mean, a man that hides his sins will not prosper. So we need to really come to true repentance. And then when we do that. Um, God sets us up. He really does. I mean, Joel 2, 25 and 26, I will repay you for the years uh, the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts and the other locusts, the, the, lo the locust swarm, my great army that I have sent among you. 
Look what he says in verse 26. You shall have plenty to eat until you are full, completely satisfied. And you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders. Look at work the miraculous for you. Never again will my people be ashamed. Come on, we've got to let God work the miraculous here. Because we've already done due diligence and repented and come back to God. And he said, I'm going to repay you for the years that were lost and everything that was lost in the midst of the years. All of our money, all of our assets, all of our supplies, and everything that has to do with living life at the highest possible level. He said, I will repay. You will have plenty to eat until you're full. Till you're satisfied, overflowing, you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you. Never again, until my uh, my will my people be ashamed. See, you got to give God enough credit to be able to work miraculous for you. If you think that you're just going to go ahead and you know, God's going to just little by little incrementally give you what you've lost, and then you're lost because a lot of people don't have that kind of time. I'm talking to a lot of people that are over forty. Uh, they're 50, 60, in their 70s. I mean, we need uh, a fast, a quick uh, turnabout and transaction, and God is in the business to do it. I mean, even Job, he went through like nine months of pure hell, and the devil fought him tooth and nail, and, and he struggled. his struggle was just almost helpless, and uh, he almost uh, checked out of this world uh, being stripped and ripped um, and torn and shorn. But Job 42.10 says, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes, restored his fortunes, and gave him twice as much as he had before. God did this with a period of uh, six to nine months. And Job was totally emaciated. He was nothing but bone, you know, and sitting there. He was, he was so, uh, he was so destroyed and, and so dismantled that people were afraid to look at him. But God recreated his body and then recreated his fortunes within six to nine months. Hallelujah. You know, in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in the future. See, God's got your future in mind. He's got plans for you. He wants you to prosper. He's not in it to hurt you and harm you. He wants you to have that kind of expectation, uh, that right now and for the future, he is working out divine arrangements for you so much so that it's just outside the box, incredible, beyond your imagination, beyond your thinking processes. That's why we got to relax our thinking processes and just sing songs to the Lord, um, stay filled with the Spirit, uh, uh, sing psalms to the Lord, uh, worship God, thank God, praise God, and let him just bleach out and blot out the negations there um, and any of the limitations and hesitations and reservations. We need to let God just uh, pure form everything, bring everything into a whole new world of existence. And then when, he, when, we, when we allow that to happen, then nothing but uh, enjoying the wealth will hit us uh, right in our face. I mean, Isaiah, by God's grace, of course, the word aces and grace, they're written. The word race is in grace. I mean, it's all good. Uh, Isaiah 62, verse 1, foreigners will take care of your sheep. Foreigners will work in your fields and vineyards. Look at that. Foreigners are going to work for you in seed time and harvest. They're going to begin to provide you with resources, and they're going to walk this thing out for you. And if you don't have the money, they've got it, and they're going to bring it. And you will be called the Lord's priest and servants of God. You will enjoy the wealth. Look at that. You will enjoy the wealth of nations and boast yourself uh, and boast and about the riches you receive from them. So the wealth of the nations is going to come into your play, into, in, into your field of view, and into your, um, into your protocol. It's going to reach you. I mean... It's going to happen. You'll enjoy the wealth of nations and boast about the riches that you receive from them. Instead of shame, you'll get a double portion. Instead of humiliation, uh, they will receive over the land. Uh, they will rejoice, excuse me, over the land they receive. And they will possess a double portion in their land and experience uh, everlasting joy. Look at that. They'll receive a double portion. They'll possess a double portion. They will possess a double portion. And, 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 and God's giving us new land. They will rejoice over the land. They receive. 
And and for shame is giving a double portion. For shame is giving. Look, for shame is giving a double. Are you kidding me? That's the way it is. Can you open your minds? Can you open your gates of your thoughts and your imagination? Can you open the gates up there and just let God uh, swell and jail and rule and be cool and just take you to where you've never been before and give you what you never had before? Because, you know, with man it's impossible, Luke 18, 27. Jesus said, with man it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. You know, nothing's too hard for God. Uh, Jeremiah said it, Jeremiah 32, 17. Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you since we're children of Abraham. You just go to Genesis 3, 14 and 15. Read it for yourself. And I like that Deuteronomy 33, 29. It says, Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, a people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency? Thine enemies shall be found to be liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon the high their high place. Thou shalt tread upon their high places. God is giving us treading power to go up in the high places and subdue the enemies of our wealth, enemies of our abundance, enemies of our high life. Anything that's been holding us back, causing us to deteriorate or falter, fail. Causing us to have mishaps and misfirings. God's removing all that now. Hallelujah. People say by the Lord, the shield of thy help, who is the sword of thy excellency, thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. See, all these lies that have been just firing away at you for, for your lifetime now are being expunged. God is ridding you of all, extracting all this. He's got his mighty sword out. He's cutting those things, those attachments away from you, away from your view, and you're becoming brand new. Hallelujah! There it is. So we need to return. You know, Psalm 116, verse 7, Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt. Look at that. Return unto my rest. In, in, in Hebrew says that there remaineth yet a rest for the children of God. But here it says in Psalm 116, 7, Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with me. Can you can you receive that? Can you receive that? The Lord hath dealt bountifully with me. The Lord hath dealt bountifully with me, for thou hast delivered my soul from death, and my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. So no more failure, no more faults, no more uh, futility. Amen. And God's deliverance is here, bringing us into his rest, dealing us bounty. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, 70. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Open thou mine eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of your word. And God's choosing for us an inheritance off the hook, off the chain, in the main frame of the glory of heaven, of who God is and what he's up to in the Holy Spirit. Psalm 47, 2, for the Lord most high is terrible. He's a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us. He shall choose our inheritance for us in the excellency of Jacob, Jacob, whom he has loved. Well, I mean, there it is. It's 28 minutes and 17 seconds. So if you want to sow a seed, get right in the mix. Break all the devil's tricks. Get a seed in the ground right now. Become renowned. Let it go underground and let it give you everything that God has. The only way to do this, uh, to get to where God wants you to, to be, is to do seed time and harvest, uh, Genesis 8, 22. So what you want to do is um, just go to DallasRevivalCenter.com. There's a uh, PayPal link. Click on that. Take you right to PayPal or download the uh, Zelle application on your smartphone, Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Uh, most of the major banks Wells Fargo and Citibank and Bank of America have this uh, application. Download Zelle and then uh, just put in 469-335-3356, 469-335-3356, or send it to the P.O. Box. Make your seed uh, check and money order available to United Assemblies Worldwide Outreach Ministries. Or you just put uh, U-A-W-O-M-I, U-A-W-O-M-I, and, and, and send uh, the letterhead to Dallas Revival Center, 271-636, 271-636, Dallas, Texas, 75227, or go to Facebook in the inbox, click on the dollar sign, send seed that way. Anyway, you'll get in the ground. 
come right down and get everything God has for you. And much, much more. Hallelujah does he have in store. Beyond our imaginations. Uh, uh, Ephesians 3.20, go read that. God bless you right now. Jesus, holy name. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.